Now, I, I've got to ask you this question. When you're on stage performing and you're doing your, you're, you're out there having a tremendous amount of energy connecting with your fans, how much desire is there that night to just have some amazing sex since you're singing about it, right? You got to have sex after the show, right? Come on, girls, get X, 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 X rated. Come on, boys, get X, 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 X rated. Do you know the Dave Darren Show? It's hot enough to boil a monkey's bum! Most people say, who the fuck is Dave Darren? Like Disneyland, I'm the happiest fucking guy on earth. Who the fuck is Dave Darren? Who the fuck is Dave Darren? Are you a puff duck? He used to be on terrestrial radio, but he got fired. Aspen, Aspen, Aspen. Who the fuck is Dave Darren? Here comes the boss villain now! Dave Darren. Welcome to the Dave Darren Show. Hang on. Uh, technical difficulties here as usual. Always I have these. Hang on one second. There we go. There we are. I finally have the beautiful MK Ultra. And uh, I'm in Hollywood making it weirder, like just hanging out in the trees, stuff like that. We're going to talk all about your music today, and I, I got some great tracks from you, and you are a tremendous entertainer all around. I mean, we're talking about the presentation of you in the videos, which is tremendous. Great vocal talents from you. I got to say that as well. Some really good musical talents from you. Have, have you, uh, how long have you been performing? Um, I've been performing as a vocalist for three years now. Um, I was a songwriter and either bassa, bassist or guitarist in, in bands beforehand. But uh, when it came down to the experience I went through here, which was in the promo, I don't want to talk too much about it, but the near-death experience, it really had me uh, get up and want to uh, say things from a lyrical standpoint a lot more and uh, kind of give people an inside look into what's going on in the entertainment industry and kind of, you know make fun of myself and make fun of the whole industry as well but yeah i worked extremely hard at my vocals as far as you know what i do now I and mean, you have to these days because uh it's just a different climate in music altogether so uh yeah i i try to put on a good presentation for my evil ones my fan base they're more fit actually and, and I, uh, I, I did notice you have a tremendous fan base, and they seem to be pretty loyal to you. So obviously social media helps you out a lot. And, and being true to yourself, because you just mentioned after your near-death experience, we'll talk about that a little bit. Did that, by yeah. the way, did that near-death that, that experience, did that take you out of like a shell that you were in before and just opened your mind up to expand? I'm getting kind of that vibe from you, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Basically everything I was holding back before, I just let it all out after – the bus hit me and then I went through recovery and all this freaky MK Ultra stuff and that's why I call myself MK Ultra. And exactly as far as social media, um, you know, evil ones, you know, I consider myself an evil one, so it's like a family, we're all in it together. <laughs> but you know, so it and I think that not enough bands are doing that nowadays. It's like you have to know that your supporters are the ones that are paving your way and uh i definitely recognize that but you're completely right after the near-death experience it was like okay I'm, I'm not holding back now i'm not going all out on this shit you know so yeah, yeah you know what's funny is, I, I like you, you know what's funny is when i used to listen to music like maybe like 20 years ago it seemed like the pop artists were more edgy than they are now like you think of madonna like she was ultimate edgy in the beginning you know all through her career, she's been edgy. And then there was oh, kind of, there's kind of a gap with the exception of like rap music where the edge has gone out a bit. And now here you are bringing the edge back. Do you feel that that's really true? Do you feel that the edge was gone and now you're bringing it back? And that's a big part. Are? 
yeah, that that's a, a big part of it. It's, what it is is it's I I don't see anyone. It I'm doing it. It comes out naturally to me. It's not like I want to be edgy or anything like that. But I think it's good with art not to have a filter. So I don't yeah. do it really for the shock effect. But I'm influenced by a lot of people like Madonna. You know, Trent Reznor from Nine Inch Nails. Um, Prince, for example, I'm very influenced by Prince. You know, the people that really didn't give a fuck what other people thought, and it worked for them, you know? So I think that's what I kind of do. It's like, I don't censor myself. I don't, I, I speak my mind, and if you don't like it, that's fine. You don't have to, you know, listen to my music if it offends you, you know? But yeah. for the people that do like it, thank you very much. Um, uh, my job is to get people to expose to all kinds of music, all kinds of people, because the, the boredom level out there is tremendous. So I'm trying to bring the boredom level, throw it the fuck out of there, and just have people like you on the show. So I, I really dig the music. Tell me about some of the tracks. We're going to play here uh, Hollywood Holocaust, and we're also going to do x Rated. We'll do two of them here. So which one, okay. should we, which one do you want to start off with? And when we started off, Tell me about it, how you wrote it, how it is so fucking sexy. Tell me about that as well. Tell me all about the sex appeal of these songs. <laughs> uh, well, there is a lot of sex appeal with it. And again, you know, that's something that I feel has been taken outside of rock music as well, uh, just like The Edge. So a song like Hollywood Holocaust, what it is, it's explaining my place in this fucked up Hollywood an entertainment industry and you know i even make fun of myself a bit in the song you know because if you're going to take shots at other people you kind of have to be have a tongue-in-cheek fuck you type um attitude with it so with like the video for hollywood holocaust for example you know edward stevens does all my music videos and he just that's what I'm going for like that. And what it is, is we just bounce ideas off each other and, uh, you know, we make the video together, but he really brings it up to that standard. Like he basically said, we'll bring out like a little bikini or something and be like, Hey, you're wearing this. And I'll be like, okay. And it's settled just like that. So cool. That's, cool. Uh, so what are we going to start off? Are we going to start off with Hollywood Holocaust or we should start off with extra. I'll tell you what, let's start off with something and then get into that fucked up Crazy move with X-rated. So let's play Hollywood Holocaust first, okay? Okay, sounds okay, good. So here we go on the Dave Darren show. I have to just drag it over without making an error this time. By the way, my audience is used to all my fucked up errors. So here we go. I'm going to move it over. We're going to play the track. And again, this is you announce your name. MK Ultra, and this is Hollywood Holocaust. One of the goals of MK Ultra was mind control. Through a combination of hypnosis and hallucinogenic drugs, along with torture, a human being can be programmed to do anything. Welcome to the place where the only thing you need to know is how to give great head. You know what? I am your sex, your drugs, and your death on a cocaine street liquor diet.
incredible track. I loved it. Very cool. Thank you. I now, appreciate it. Now, I, I've got to ask you this question. When you're on stage performing and you're doing your, you're, you're out there having a tremendous amount of energy connecting with your fans, how much desire is there that night to just have some amazing sex since you're singing about it, right? you got to have sex after the show, right? I'm imagining well, I, that. I always, I always do that. I mean, um, I feel like uh, if they're there to watch the show, the only fair thing is to give some of that energy back. So, um, yeah, I mean, and, uh, yeah, I'm just looking around here making sure no one got pissed off in Hollywood while we played that song. But, yeah, you know, that, that's what rock and roll is about is having that attitude to go along with the music. And I just feel like it's something that's lost, you know. It's like I feel like everyone's in boxes, but I don't want to be in any of those boxes. You know what I mean? It's like the box is too fucking crowded for me. It's like let me out. Let me perform like I'm on bath salts, and I'll have a great time. So. Uh huh. So let me ask you. You know, I have asked this question to a lot of rock bands that come on the show, and they're up on stage, and they're rock stars. They got these rock star images, and when people go to see you guys perform, they should be accustomed to wanting to be entertained at a maximum level. Whether it, whether it includes sex, whether it includes a guy up there smashing the guitar, cracking the guitar, whatever, whatever he's doing. You guys are rock stars. So when I get some audience people that say, damn, Dave, these fuckers are like rock stars. You're supposed to be rock stars when you're on stage, right? Oh, yeah. That's what you guys are. You're entertainers with the energy to give to your audience. Why hold back, right? Exactly. And the way I like to explain it is when I'm actually performing, there's a whole different thing that comes over me where, like, I'm so focused on what I'm doing, like, I'm not thinking of like what the next line is, everything else. It's almost like I go to a totally different mind state and it just is an insanity on stage. So we're planning a tour now and uh, I can't announce anything yet, but there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes. So, you know, people will be able to see it and uh, more and uh, I'm excited for that. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's like if you're going to go see a show, you want to be entertained. If you're if you go and you're unenthusiastic and we're like, well, that was kind of good. You know, it's, it's 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 like that that one hit wonder that doesn't play its hit single, you know, you can't be kind of good these days. You've got to be better than kind of good. Right. I, I know that from seeing all the bands perform and I want to see you perform as well. When I, I'm, at, I'm in the West Coast enough where I can check you out and see you perform out there. But right. I, I'm interested. The tour. I know you say you can't talk a whole lot about it, but give us a little cock and vagina tease. Tell us about it. Is it going to be like a West to East Coast tour? Is it going to be a West Coast mostly tour? Give us that little teaser, if you could. A little bit. Little, little bit. Um, I, I'll put it, put it this way. Right now, they're trying to find someone fucked up enough to fit me with. That's where, where, where we are at now is is everyone's like, well, I have to support the Hollywood Holocaust EP, but it's kind of like, who does he go with? And I guess that's kind of what you sign up for with Fee Now the Box. So there's been talk about me being with certain bands and stuff like that. And then it's like, oh, no, that won't. So right now it's more of like choosing the proper act for me to, an act bigger than me to go on tour with and connect with their audience because if you don't connect um you know i i'm not stupid i'm certainly not for everyone but i feel like if i was performing in front of like someone that listens to placebo or something like that they would get what i'm doing yeah i, I think you're right and and actually when uh, you tour i'm, I'm curious because a lot of the bands including yourself probably depend on merchandise sales merch sales right so I, yep. admit, I got I got to ask you what your merch booth is like. Is it fucking insane? Tell me about your merch booth. Vib vibrators, dildos there, or what's going on with that stuff? <laughs> well, that, that's going to come later. But we have a ton of merch at mkultramusic.com. Um, wow. And, uh, you know, people can put custom messages for me to sign and everything like that. I'll You know, so I've got a great... Uh, 
team that runs my merch store and I'm part of that team that runs it, but I got to give credit to the people that I have working for me, of course. And uh, yeah, I mean, we have t-shirts, CDs, bracelets, um, posters. So, and we're just going to expand on that as it, it grows more and more. And that, that's what this business is all about in this climate today. It's all about just growing and evolving and having more people talk about you and everything like that because it, it, other streams of how other people used to discover music is being cut off. So it's a lot of word and mouth now and doing stuff like this. So Yeah, very cool. So I'll tell you what, let's play your next track, which is called X-Rated. Then I want to make sure we come back. So I want to make sure everyone listening to you knows how to connect with you and buy some merch. Because I did see that your website has a lot of merchandise on it for sale. You got package stuff. I know you have like a, a shirt and other product to go along in your package. So it's good marketing. You have some good people behind you. And, and I want to talk about that too. Some of the people behind you that are helping you out, which is a good idea. You're young enough, but you actually know a lot of stuff in business. It seems like you're connecting with the right people. It seems like you're doing stuff the right way. So let's play X-Rated on Dave Darren Show. This is another cool track. Tell us about it before we play it, though. Tell me about the track. Well, it's uh, it got a different sound than Hollywood Holocaust. Um, I've always been about the song, you know. If it's a good song, that's all that fucking matters to me. And um, this song, it's more poppy. You know, I, I love pop music as well as heavy rock music, electronic music. So I kind of try to put all those influence and music together. As far as the video, the song's called X-Rated, so you're going to get an X-Rated video. You're going to get a lot of weird fucking imagery, and that's just the way it's going to be. You're not going to see me, you know, in a fucking, uh, just like a Pikachu, you know what I mean? It's not going to fucking happen. All right, so here we go. This is X-Rated on the Dave Darren Show. And this is MK Ultra. Here we go. Come on, girls, get X, 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 X rated. Come on, boys, get X, 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 X rated. I'm every parent's worst nightmare Product of corporate America I'm like that girl or boy next door Drunk draw didn't pass out on your floor
Hey, welcome back to the Dave Dan Show. MK Ultra, you're still there. I am here. Awesome. Tell us all about how to connect with you on your website. How do people find you on Twitter? I know you're very active on Twitter. Tell us all about how to hook up with you. Sure. My Twitter is mkultra underscore band. Uh, my Instagram is mk underscore ultra and underscore music. And my website with all the merch on it that's run by Team Sloth is mkultramusic.com. And uh, Team Sloth is like my inner business workings. Um, I have an obsession with sloths, um, the animal. So uh, Monarch, who produced uh, the EP, uh, Hollywood Holocaust, did a great job. And he helps me run the store and stuff like that. But I'm very hands-on with my business, you know. So. Absolutely. And, and it's tremendous because I... I when I first met you, and you were very, you were more prompt than I was. And that's for a radio guy to be less prompt than the guest. That kind of sucks. So you are, you have a very good work ethic. You have some great talent. There's some great vocals, some original music. I noticed that uh, Hollywood Holocaust has some variation in the, even the beats, the rhythm, the tempo. You throw in some almost like, threw in almost like a little bit of classical flair to it. It was true. I highly enjoyed it, by the way. So I, I'm great having you on the show. When I come out to L.A., I want to see you perform. I want to check out one of your gigs because I, I want to see the energy that you carry into the audience, which will be me as part of it, okay? That sounds great. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. You're tremendous. Thanks a lot for being a guest on the show. Talk to you uh, soon. Cool.